Today's lesson brings Larry to the state of Alabama on the Coosa River chain at Lake Neely Henry. Finding river bass can sometimes be difficult. Let's join Larry in his search for spotted bass in today's lesson, Finding River Bass. There, good spot of bass. There, that's the kind we've been looking for right there. The size of that spot now, that's a nice one. Not a four or five pounder, but that is a good Alabama spotted bass. That is a nice spotted bass right there. Pretty good fish. Now, he liked that big pro model. Down pretty deep, too. Got to let that thing get down there and bump along that cover. Boy, he clobbered it there, something right there, a stump or... I mean, he knocked fire from it when he hit it. He wasn't fooling around at all. Sometimes when you're fishing places like this, I mean, it may take you 30 minutes to figure out the right angle and the right drift of your bait. You got that current washing down through there and you just gotta let a spinner bait float. Even with a crankbait, you gotta get the right angle. The current's what brings that bait to them fish. All you're doing is trying to keep it in the right depth of water and imitate the bait fish. These fish here feed on big shad. Coosa River's always had big, big bait fish. That's why so many of the fishermen over in this part of the country, they throw either great big deep diving crankbaits or great big spinnerbait with colored blades. When fishing underwater structure in heavy current, be patient. Sometimes finding the right angle of drift with your bait can be critical. times when these river systems like this, you know, they, they got a certain date, like the 1st of May when they bring them up to full pool. And uh, when, when the lake is low, fish usually don't go in and spawn even though the water temperature may be in the 60s. Until that water comes up and stabilizes, I mean, they just usually don't go in there and waste their time of spawning. And that's why even though uh, it may be the 20th of April in South Alabama, fish aren't on the beds, and yet you go to uh, a lake in Arkansas and they'll be spawning. But the difference there is stable water. That's a big difference when it comes to what the bass are doing in a lake. Big bodies of water can be a real intimidating. And for a new fisherman to go out on a big lake and, and catch fish, I wouldn't really expect to go out on a big lake and catch fish immediately. Even I have problems on big bodies of water. Sometimes it takes me two or three days to uh, really figure out what the fish are doing on a big body of water. The best piece of advice that I could give a fisherman on a new lake is to pick you an area, maybe a major creek, and go in that area and spend most of your day fishing that area. Until you get to be an experienced fisherman, you just can't expect to go out on a big body of water and do good every time you go out there. You know, I have people ask me all the time, why, why can't I catch fish on something like that? 90% of the time, you're not throwing it where bass live. And that's the reason why. Now they'll hit a big spinner bait, this three quarter ounce pro model, they'll bite it even in shallow water when they want a fast moving spinner bait. But it's really, designed more for fishing down and around structure, brush piles, points, underwater rocks, brush piles, 
grass beds, anything that holds fish that's down under the water that you can't see, that's what this bait is really designed for. Like I said, I use it a lot in shallow water. Sometimes when I'm wanting to hum a spinner bait a long ways and really cover some ground with a fast moving bait, clear water lakes, but off colored water, this bait usually, oh, there's one too. See what I mean? You just had to get it down deep. Whoa! This feels like another hog. It is a hog. Check out this hog. The wrong kind of hog. But it was fun. Thank you, Mr. Striper. Boy, he knocked the fire out of my spinnerbait. Now, stripers are fun. I don't mind catching a big striper. I'm tell you right now, there ain't a person in this world that wouldn't like to have a big striper tug on his lure. If you don't have fun catching fish like that, you might as well quit fishing. But he hit like a spotted bass. He didn't just really crater it like a striper does a lot of the times. Little old places like this where fish school up on river systems or lakes, either one. Sometimes these type of holes, boy, they take a long time to find them. I mean, you may fish all day just to find one hole. You got to be real patient when you're talking about finding a school of bass that are not on visible cover. Finding a school of bass on invisible underwater cover can be difficult. The key is to be patient, realizing that you may have to fish a spot from many different angles and directions. I got him snagged in the bottom of the head. I don't even have this one in the mouth. That's why he felt so big. Look at there. Hooked him under the chin. And he's not as big as I thought he was, but he's still pretty. I wonder how come I didn't get him in the mouth. Just took a pass at it. I knew he was still full of fire when he took off. He tried to get me wet. There is some nice cover right there. You know, when you, when you find a place like this and you feel like that it should hold fish, be sure and remember it. I mean, if it's got that nice structure down there and it's got a stump or two that's down there on a drop, I promise you, sooner or later, they're gonna use it sometime during the year. It's just a matter of figuring out when. I found a lot of places before that I didn't catch no fish on at the particular time I found them. But then I just keep going back until I figured out what time of day the fish was there. Or even on Toledo Bend where I guided all them years, it just amazed me how some of them good old guide holes that I used to have, I mean, if you wasn't there at the right time of day, you never caught any fish out of them. These river lakes are really that way because of that current. I mean, when, uh, if, if you don't fish a place often enough to get a feel for how much current it takes to turn the fish on, then you're not gonna learn anything. If you find a spot that you feel should hold fish, then fish the area thoroughly. If it's not productive, then return to it several times during the day or several days you may find that time of day or amount of current may be important. He is right out on the end of that point out there. Not a bad little spot. 
Not a not a jumbo spot, but not bad. Not too bad. Try that again right there. Funny how fish, a lot of times they like that current washing right into them. You know what? Oh, I got that one. That feels like a good one there. That feels like a jumbo spot. I mean, that feels like a good one. I don't know how big he is. Look at the size of that spotted bass. That is a spotted bass. Golly. Why don't you get off, you big outfit? I used to think that you had to fish down current. Come here. Don't you do it. Look at the size of that spotted bass. That is a hog spot. I mean, he couldn't stand that big three-quarter ounce pro model. Ain't that a jumbo? Boy, I believe that's the biggest spot I've ever caught. About a four and a half pounder. I'm not bad about guessing them, but I bet that fish weighs four and a half pounds. Some people call him five, but thank you. That was a spot. Kind of messed up my bait now. That little pigtail on there. Let me get that thing back in the water before I drift away. That current has got me moving pretty good. Boy, he knocked fire from it now. I'll tell you what, when they hit a spinner bait, if they all hit it like that, there's no doubt you got a bite. Learning a river system can entail a lot of moving from spot to spot trying to find the productive areas. But guard against spending too much time driving and not enough time fishing. Lands a living at the fish suspended on that lip. Right there. I see that's that's cover sitting right on the break there. That's what they pull up on. So you fish are suspended all out here away from it. When that current starts running, it puts them right on it. I mean, I know as a fisherman, it makes you want to stop and fish for them. But if they're off the edge of that break, you're just not going to do much with them. But what you want to do is come back and fish that place at a later time, because if they ever move out of that deep water and get close to that edge or right on that edge, buddy, that's when you can kill them. When using your electronics, if you see fish suspended over a break, realize that these are probably uncatchable fish. However, try this spot at a later time. If the fish move out of the deeper water onto the break, you may just catch them in a feeding mode. Spinner baits got a well, George, that one right there. Spinner baits have got a oh, and he feels good too. Spinnerbait got that big old, oh, he is a big one. Doggone, he's a good one. I mean, he's a big spot. Good spot. Stay on there, darling. Come here. Gotcha. That's another good one there. He big. That is a fat, healthy, spotted bass now. Isn't he pretty? See, they hadn't spawned. Fish in these river systems a lot of times don't spawn as early as you think they would. Boy, oh, that's a pretty bass. Now remember that your conditions of the day, that's a lot of the times now, that totally determines on how you work the bait, slow or super fast. Fish have moods just like people. And boy, I'm telling you what, they go into some of them faster than you think. And when you've got an area you know the bass are in, 
then you just have to look and try to find their mood. Are they aggressive? Are they slow? Or do you have to irritate them? You just have to figure this out, and that's something you have to do every day. And a lot of times, two or three times a day. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson on Lake Neely Henry. I spent a lot of time in the backwater on this particular lake that you didn't get a chance to see looking for these fish because, man, it's April. Bass are supposed to be in shallow water back in the coals and pockets. But right now, they're fluctuating the lake level, and I feel like that it's just got most of the fish back in the, in the shallow bays just scared to death because the only thing I could catch back there was little bass and every now and then see a big one running from the boat. Couldn't do nothing with them, but I moved out on the river and started fishing some bars with stumps. And that's the whole key to catching big spots on the Coosa River chain. A big pro ledge spinnerbait with a pigtail trailer, fishing it real slow, getting it right down there and banging on stumps and rocks, anything that you could find where the current would just kind of swing in and, and it had a washed out place on the bottom. And that's, that's really the only place that I could do any good with these particular bass. Come back and see me again next week and I'll teach you how to be a better bass fisherman.